Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about foxglove. I recently posted a picture of these gorgeous Dalmatian peach foxgloves on Instagram and Facebook. We're sitting in the flower bed behind the chicken coop right now and I started these from seed and in my post I talked about how easy they are to grow and there seemed to be a lot of questions. So I thought I would take the opportunity today just to go through some basic growing information based on my experience. I don't know everything there is to know about foxglove but I've had really good luck with them. Um, so I just thought I would share what I know and then I want to answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I saw come through. First of all, foxglove are a biennial. Um, there are annuals, biennials, and perennials. So annuals, as you know, they are the plants that you have to replant every year. Perennials come back every year, and biennials live for two years. So the way it goes with foxglove, the first year, and this is not typical of all varieties, but of the uh, family or the group of plants as a whole, they um, produce leaves and a root system the first year, and then they die back for the winter, and they come back the second year, and that's the year that they bloom. And they will set seed that year, the mother plant will die, and they will try to reseed themselves around in that area. So most of the time, and everybody has a different experience with this, in my experience, they do reseed themselves and come up in the general area that I planted the mother plant. So they are kind of like almost a self-seeding annual. For me my parents though have the worst luck getting them to reseed so for them when they plant them in they, their garden they know it's a two-year thing and then they need to replant so everybody has a different experience there are some varieties though that will bloom the first year like these right here so i started these from seed inside i started them on february the 13th um, planted them outside on may the 24th and they look like this um, i just realized i'm blocking most of them Awesome, I framed that real well, didn't I? So a variety like this, Dalmatian peach, or I did start another one called Camelot mix. They bloom the first year, and if you leave them alone, you know, you can cut them back in the fall, mulch up the crown of the plant. When they come back the next year, they will bloom again. So they will bloom both years, they will set seed both years, um, and then the mother plant will die, and hopefully they will perpetuate themselves through seed. And you can either gather that seed and start it inside, or you can just let them seed themselves naturally. And I don't know all the varieties that will bloom the first year. I'm sure there are more than just the two. Um, so let me repeat those two, Dalmatian peach and Camelot mix. I think that you can get Camelot lavender and Camelot cream, I think. I think there are several that you can get that will bloom the first year, but these are just the two I have experience with. Um, I did start two other varieties from Seed Inside. They were called Cafe Cream and Pink Gin, and those will not bloom this year. They're just growing away, creating beautiful leaves and a really healthy root system, and then I can see their blooms next year. I think the amount of light that they need or that they want in order to perform is probably the most asked question that I see. Um, for me, I get them to perform the best in quite a lot of sun. So right back here, it's almost eight o'clock at night right now, and they just, I actually have a shade up to my left right here because there was still some sun on them. So they get sun for a good portion of the day, and they really do well. I don't have any issues with them wilting, or um, like it doesn't seem like it um, shortens their bloom cycle, if that makes sense. So I feel like, and I think for most varieties, you'll, you'll see on the tag or the um, seed packet that they want sun to part shade. Now that's probably not true of all varieties. There are some that can handle a little bit more shade, but I do think that they perform the best when they're given a little bit more light. In fact, I can see the Camelot mix. I have some planted just beyond this flower bed and they are still in the sun right now and they have been since early this morning. And I think the success with keeping them in that much light is the amount of water they get too. So they do want a, a situation that's moist, but not soggy. Like they don't want to sit in water. They're kind of like most other plants. They don't want to sit in a soggy situation where they can never breathe, their root systems can't breathe, but they want the soil to be consistently moist. So they don't want to dry out too much. So in this area and most flower beds in our garden, we have a drip system running through each one of them. And we space our brown tubing out about 18 inches or so. And it has emitter holes every 18 inches. Pretty good coverage, but not perfect. So what we have to do when we plant things like this in like large drifts, um, not every single root ball gets direct water to it. So for the first like month or month and a half after we planted these, uh, we did have to provide supplemental water. So we have to come fill up the fountain and water some other things in this area anyway. So we just give them a little drizzle of water every day um, just to help them get through the heat. And we have a lot of wind here 
and it seems to do a really good job. And now we're not providing any supplemental water now that they're established. In terms of what kind of winters they can survive, um, most varieties fall within the zone four through eight category. There are some varieties that will go, you know, lower or maybe a little bit higher. Um, and again, I don't have like a com like complete comprehensive list of all of the varieties of foxgloves that exist, but you can probably do a Google search, search based on your zone and you can figure out what varieties would do well in your area. But foxgloves for me have always come back faithfully. You do want to make sure that you either leave the leaves on them so that the crown is protected throughout the winter or provide a little bit of moisture every once in a while because like sometimes we have really dry winters and if they dry out um, from wind or you know just not getting any rain or snow on them they can just they can die that way so either mulching them up or leaving the the leaves to protect the crown really kind of helps and i really don't even have to worry about providing extra moisture probably should have mentioned toxicity very first thing that's one of the biggest things whenever i'm planting delphiniums or foxglove or i can't remember there's a couple other other plants that people usually kind of get a little nervous about but every part of the foxglove plant is toxic to humans and animals as far as i know i have never had a problem with my, any of my animals now i grew up around all of the poisonous things and i was just taught from a very young age what i could and couldn't mess with and honestly i don't think most i don't know i don't I don't see kids just running out like breaking off pieces of random plants and eating them. Um, maybe like dogs, maybe there are some really destructive dogs that like to eat everything. In that case, I would maybe be a little bit nervous, but my cats stay away. I think animals instinctually know what they can and can't mess with in the garden. And as far as Benjamin goes, we always tell him like, you know, we have some plants that have berries and then we also have blueberries and grapes that look very similar. And so he'll point at something that has berries and say, oh, grapes. And we'll tell him, no, 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 you know, and we kind of get down at his level and we explain to him, these are gucky, you can't eat these. Um, so he knows what he can and can't uh, ingest out in the garden. Not that we don't watch him because I know things still happen and kids will be kids. Um, to a certain degree. And they are resistant to deer and rabbits and I think that's a big reason why because I think that they know we can't eat this plant because it will make us sick. But it does, these do attract honeybees like crazy and hummingbirds. I'm not so sure. I've never seen butterflies really attracted to them. I think the nectar or the pollen might be a little bit too like hard to get to because of the tube shaped blooms. I don't know if that's a thing but I do see um, honeybees especially flock to these plants. And the last thing before we get into questions is I wanted to touch a little bit on how to grow these from seed because they are so extremely easy in my opinion. I do have grow lights. I have a grow light set up and I do think that that is vital to the success of growing seeds. I know lots of people do it without it. If you've got a really bright window, awesome, like still go for it. I didn't use a heat mat with these. Um, so I don't think that that's a necessary piece of equipment that you need, um, but you do have to make sure you start them 10 to 12 weeks before your average last frost date. They need quite a long time to get going, get started, get established, and be ready to go out once that frost date is passed. I think I started mine a little bit too early though because I ended up, and I cannot find the video, I know I put it in a vlog somewhere, where I had to bump up all of my foxgloves and delphiniums from their uh, seed trays, which were, I used the 24 count cell, um, self-watering seed trays from Gardener Supply, um, which lifesaver. Like, if you want to invest in seed trays, they're awesome because it, it um, lengthens the time between you having to water. And when you're doing seeds in those little tiny trays, you know how quick they dry out. So I really had a good time with using those this year, but they are still kind of smallish. And I ended up having to bump all of these plants up into four inch cups in April. And at that point, when I bumped them into four inch cups, I actually left them out in the greenhouse at that point. We don't have a heated greenhouse, but it was warm enough. I feel like, especially because foxglove and delphiniums both are, um, very cold tolerant you know they survive our winter so i thought i'll just leave them in here they'll be safe from any frost or anything like that and that way they have a little bit of a chance to harden off um, get used to a little bit cooler temperatures before i plant them out and it worked really well and like i said i planted them out on may 24th and we did put up a video about that as well i could have put them out a lot sooner i could have put them out probably the beginning of may uh, we did have an unusually cool spring so I did, like it pushed a lot of my planting projects out and so it just kind of got bumped down the uh, list of things I needed to do and that's why it was so late this year. Okay, so now I wanna get into some questions. I did take some screenshots, so I'm gonna have to be reading them from my phone. You have to pardon me. So it'll be kind of like one of our recap videos here. 
Uh, Kimberly Ann 171 said, quick question, why do foxgloves fall over? How do you avoid? I think there's a few things you can do to avoid them flopping. First off, there are a lot of varieties and a lot of different heights that you can plant, like mature heights. These, I think 24 to 30 inches is their mature height. There are some varieties that will get tall, like as tall as me or taller. Those, of course, because they're so much taller, they're more susceptible to wanting to flop over because they're gonna be a lot more top heavy. Um, but these shorter ones are usually a little stockier, less prone to falling over. So kind of, kind of consider that when choosing the variety you're gonna grow. Um, also, if they're over fertilized, they will tend to want to flop. So I did Biotone starter fertilizer when I planted these in the ground and that's it this year. I won't be giving them any more fertilizer. So I gave them a good start, but they don't need continual fertilizer and that will make them weaker and want to fall over. Um, if they are getting not enough light or if they're getting too much water, that weakens the plant as well. Also, these are sitting right behind our chicken coop, which um, they are protected from the west which is where most of our wind comes from. So if you're strategic about where you plant them, then you may not have to stake them. You can stake them though. Um, you know, all of my delphiniums around here, I should be staking and I just never get around to it. And so they all fall down. Uh, all my foxgloves, it doesn't really seem to matter where I put them. They're just the shorter varieties and they tend to stay upright, but positioning them like these are makes them extra safe. Uh, Gardens and Chickens says, where do you get the seeds from? Definitely going to try to grow them next year, which makes me happy to hear. I got these seeds for the Dalmatian peach from Florette. She's got gorgeous varieties on her website. If you've never been to her website, we'll link her site down below so you can check it out. There's so many beautiful things. I ordered a number of things this year. I also ordered, uh, I think actually the other three varieties came from Johnny Seeds. Um, which I also find to be a really good resource. The information they provide even on their seed packets is phenomenal. It's probably the best I have seen. So we'll link both of those down below. I'm reading a lot of these questions that I took screenshots of earlier and I think I've answered a lot of them already. Um, oh, Audrey said, I have these, how do I deadhead them? So this is a thing um, that is kind of personal preference. So when they have spent blooms, they don't look the best like they look a little bit scraggly and mangy, you can take them down. So you follow the bloom stock all the way down and clip it off, you know, kind of at the base. Um, if you deadhead your foxglove, sometimes they will produce like some secondary bloom stalks that are a lot shorter, but you'll get a little bit more color. It's not a guarantee, but sometimes it, it gives the plant a little more energy because if you leave the bloom stock um, where it sits, then it's going to send energy into producing seed, which is what I like to let them do. So I let them look kind of bad. Um, and just because I want them to either seed themselves or I want to gather the seeds. So that's kind of the two options there. You can deadhead them to clean up the plant and the way it looks um, and possibly get a few more blooms, or you can let it sit there and you can either gather the seed or let them reseed themselves. The Secret Garden Organ said, I love the color of these. Do they bloom all summer or is it one and done? So they really just have one bloom time, usually like early, early through midsummer, um, but they bloom for a really long time. Like these have been in bloom for quite a long time at this point. You know, it takes a long time for those bloom stalks to bloom all the way up. Um, so I find that it's a, a pretty good window, a pretty good bloom window. And then again, if you decide to deadhead them, um, they may shoot up a little bit more color for you. B D E T D V D said, can you please vlog how you provide maintenance care for foxgloves and delphiniums? I find they can be sensitive to certain amounts of water and pests. Um, so I kind of went over the water already. They like moist, but well-drained. They don't want to sit in soggy soil, but they don't want to dry out. It's kind of like that fine line. Um, pro provide supplemental water when it's uh, really hot or really windy. Um, and I kind of find the same for delphiniums and foxgloves, like the same kind of care. Uh, you can deadhead to keep them looking tidy if you want to. In the fall, you can either leave the leaves to protect the crown, or you can cut them back. If you cut them back, do make sure to mulch up the crown of the plant. So, you know, put some leaves and things over the top of the crown just to protect them from extra, like moisture loss or from, you know, extra cold. And the very last question, because I had to throw out about 10, I had already answered them all, uh, was from Melissa. Isn't it an amazing feeling to grow a plant from seed? Yes. It makes you feel almost like, I don't know what the word is, like superhuman. You feel like, oh my gosh, like I cannot believe I took this tiny, itty bitty little seed and this grew from it. Makes you feel so proud of yourself. And then you do, you think about like, well, what would it cost me? 
if I was planting like some things I grew in 72 count trays. And if I were to buy 72 four inch plants, the cost of that versus growing them from seed. I mean, there is time involved. There's time in, uh, you know, maintenance, keeping them wet and things like that. But, and I can't say it would be an exact wash, like if you were to add up all your time and put a, a price to it. Um, but I don't know, there's nothing like it because it makes you feel more connected. Like I'm more proud of these than I am of a lot of other things in my garden because I'm like, I did that, what? And the last little bit of information I actually picked up on Floret's website, and they recommend that for best vase life, you harvest when the bottom third of the blooms are open, um, not the top. So you wait until like the bottom third, I don't know if we, yeah, you can see that. You wait until the bottom third are open and these will be more closed and tight. Um, and that way you'll get more vase life and you typically can get like six to eight days um, from a stem. And that's pretty much it for this video. I always just feel like if I post a picture and there's, it seems like there's more questions than normal, I feel like that merits an opportunity or a chance to talk about it a little bit more um, and maybe clear up some of those things. If I missed something, let me know in the comment section or if you have any tips or anything additional that you would like to add, please write that down below because the comment section is a really good learning tool for me and I know for a lot of other people who read through those comments. And we're all learning here, you know? Um, there are some things that I succeed at and there are some things, some things that I fail miserably at. I started Celosia from seed. You should see it. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to show it. So I'm hoping that I have better luck with that next year. You know, you win some and you lose some every year and Foxglove, they're just an easy one to win with. So I like encourage you guys to try it. It's such a great one to grow. And thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. But not before we get a little close up of these. Oh, look at that. I think I just saw a bee go into one of them. One of the blooms.